In this lecture, we are going to make a Monte Carlo simulation in order to calculate the option price. So for an option, the underlying asset or the stock follows a Wiener process or Brownian motion. This is what we have been discussing. So by simulating these stochastic processes, we can determine the price of financial instruments such as options. So this is the standard model that the underlying stock price is a stochastic process with some deterministic part and some stochastic part. We can obtain the logarithm of the stock price because we know for certain that stock prices cannot be negative. They cannot be smaller than zero as far as the value is concerned. So let's use Ito's lemma with the f function equals to logarithm s. If we use Ito's lemma, so this formula as you can see, we have been talking about Ito's lemma for x squared function, and we have come to the conclusion that it is not the same as we were dealing with deterministic variables. So that's why we have to use this Ito's formula and we can calculate the change in the given function. Basically, we have to do the same, but in this case, the f s function is not equals to s squared, it is the logarithm of the stock price. And we can come to the conclusion that it is something like this. This dw is the Wiener process, which is a random walk with mean zero and variance t, so it can be rewritten as the normal distribution with mean zero and variance t, which is equivalent to square root of t and the normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. Basically, this is the standard normal distribution. So what's going to be the solution of this equation? It's going to be the exponential function. If we make a risk neutral assumption, then the mu drift becomes the risk free interest rate. As we have discussed in the Black-Scholes model, this equation has several parameters such as the R risk-free interest rate or the volatility, but it doesn't contain the mu drift. So that's why the solution for the stock price is not going to contain the mu as well. So this is the function we are going to use. So this exponential function defines the stock price at t maturity. It's very important this is the stock value at expiry. In Monte Carlo simulation, we just have to generate a large amount of stock prices according to this equation, and the option price is the expected value of a payoff function, and we have to use a discount factor because of the time value of money. So first of all, we have to generate lots of lots of stock prices. We can calculate the option price at capital T expiry, for call option, it is the maximum out of S minus E or zero. For put option, it is the maximum out of strike price minus the price and zero. So it's going to be the payoff function, these maximum functions. And we have to use a discount factor. You may pose the question, why? Because we are going to calculate the future value of the given option because we will get a cash flow in the future in a week in a month, in a year. So that's why if we want to calculate that what's the value of that given money today, it is the present value. That's why we have to use discount factor. We are going to use the continuous model. So we have to include an exponential function when we calculate present value. Okay, we will have an option pricing class with all the parameters. The S0 is the initial price of the underlying stock. We have the strike price, we have expiry, we have the risk-free interest rate, we have the sigma volatility, and of course we have to define how many iterations we want to create, basically how many stock prices we would like to simulate. Okay, then we can simulate the call option and the put option, they are very similar except for the payoff function. For call option, we have to take the maximum out of S minus E and zero, for put option, we have to take the maximum out of E minus S and zero. That's the only difference when we calculate call options price and put options price. So first we are going to generate a two-dimensional data set. The first column will contain zeros, the second column will store the payoff. We need the first column of zeros because the payoff function is something like this, zero or S minus E for a call option. 
So that's why the first column will store zeros. The second column will contain the stock price minus the strike price. We know the strike price. Okay, how do we calculate the given stock price at expiry? We just have to use this formula, this exponential function. Okay, so this is why we have to generate random numbers. As you can see, within the range 0 and 1, it's going to be a one-dimensional array and as many random numbers as the iterations. Of course, we are going to generate a random number to every single simulated stock price. And as you can see, it is the standard normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So that's why we generate random numbers with mean 0, variance 1. Okay, then this is the equation for the stock price. It is the exponential function, risk-free rate minus 1 divided by 2, volatility squared times expiry, plus sigma times the square root of the t, which is the expiry, times the random number, basically what we have generated. So, this is the formula. Exponential function, risk-free rate minus 1 divided by 2, sigma squared t. Okay, this t is equals to the capital T, so this is the expiry, plus the volatility, square root of the expiry, and a random number. Okay, then we have to calculate the S minus e. Basically, this is the payoff function, so the stock price minus self dot e, which is the strike price. And this is the fundamental feature for Monte Carlo simulation, that we have to calculate the average. So first of all, this A max is going to return the maximum out of S minus E and 0. As you can see, the option data, first column will contain the zeros. The second column is going to contain the stock price minus strike price. So that's why the A max is going to return the maximum out of 0 and S minus E. Okay, then we have to sum them up. And we have to divide by the number of iterations. Basically, we calculate an average. Then what do we have to do? We have to calculate the discount factor. Why? Because it's going to be a payoff in the future. And we would like to calculate the present value of that future cash flow with the help of the continuous model. That's why we have to use this exponential function minus 1 times the risk-free rate times capital T, which is the expiry or maturity. It is the same for the put option, but as you can see, instead of the stock price minus strike price, it is strike price minus stock price. This is the main difference as far as call options and put options are concerned, that for call option we calculate the maximum S minus E and 0, for put option we calculate the maximum E minus S or 0. Basically, all the others are the same. So let's try to calculate call option price and put option price with the help of Monte Carlo simulation. These are the same parameters we used when we calculated options prices based on Blackshaw's formula. Now, it is based on Monte Carlo simulation and how many stocks do we want to use? Of course, if we use, for example, just 100 iterations, so 100 stocks, in order to approximate the option price, of course, it's not going to be that accurate. What about the exact solution? As you can see, call option approximately $10, put option approximately $5.5. What about the Monte Carlo simulation? Okay, you can see that with the half of 100 stocks, it's going to be quite fine. But if we make more and more stocks, so if we make more and more simulations, of course, the solution will be better and better. So let's rerun the simulation. As you can see, it is very, very close to the exact solution. 5.57, it's very close to the exact put option price. So this is how we can calculate the option price with the exact Black Shorts formula and with the help of Monte Carlo simulation. We just have to generate several stock prices. We have to calculate the stock price at capital T expiry and then we have to average in order to get the final solution. So we use this formula in order to calculate the stock price at capital T expiry. Then we use a payoff function for call option and put option. And of course, a discount factor in order to calculate the present value. That's all about Monte Carlo simulation for calculating option prices. Thanks for watching.